This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works version 3.0 license. In this video we're going to take a look at Domineering. Domineering is a domino-based game that's presented in Chapter 2 of Drake's Data Structures and Algorithms in Java. So to get things started, I'm going to do what all programmers do, which is fiddle around with the comments at the top of the program until they're sure of what it is they actually want to do. So after I go ahead and I've got my name entered and uh, the date, it is still the third, I'm going to go ahead and add a comment that perhaps properly acknowledges where this code is coming from. I'm not really writing it, I'm just copying it. So we might as well uh, mention that as well. Now. One of the things I like to do when I'm writing a class is I like to set up some spaces where I know that I'm going to add my code. I know I'm going to have fields, I know I'm going to have constructors, and I know I'm going to have methods. And so that way, as I add code, I add it in the right place. So the first field that I'm going to add is an array, a two-dimensional array, uh, of squares. I suppose they could be circles, but this game board, they're going to be squares. So I declare this to be private, like all of my fields typically are. It's going to be an, a two-dimensional array of booleans. We're going to call it squares. Now, that's just the declaration. We haven't actually said how big that array is, and that's what we do in the constructor. So we say that squares is equal to the allocation of a new array of size 8 by 8. Personally, I would love to have some kind of constant here. I would rather not have magic numbers in my code. So really, we should probably have some kind of static final constant for the board size. I'm not going to do that right now, because I'm not prepared to implement the entire game in terms of a possibly changing board size. Um, but I think it's worth mentioning that you, generally speaking, shouldn't have magic numbers. And I mean, when I say magic numbers, I mean the number 8. Where did it come from? It shouldn't be in your code. You should have a constant wherever possible. Um, now in the book also, Peter says that, well, when you allocate an array of booleans, Java will default to false. But what I'm going to encourage you to do is to you know, explicitly set the values of your array. It forces you to think about what's going there. Now what I'm doing in declaring these for loops is uh, I called, declared them with variables called rows and columns. And I realized that that was a little awkward when I get down to the allocation stage here. So I went ahead and changed the name to row and column. So my for statement says that I want to start the variable row at zero. I want to loop until it, while it's less than eight. And then each time I go through the loop I want to increment. Um, and likewise, then inside of that loop, I'll do each column. So that lets me allocate false to every element of the array squares. And my comment just says what I said before, which is, I don't really like the idea of trusting defaults. Maybe it's better Java style. For the moment, I'd like you to get in the habit of allocating all of your fields. So the last part of this code is the main method. And all of our games in this book will likely have a main method. And because Peter's a friendly kind of guy, he likes to welcome people to the, his game, so he says, welcome to domineering. We might as well be friendly as well, and we're going to create a new game object, uh, sorry, a new domineering object called game, and then we'll say, let's play the game. So now, ha, huh, of course, I created a section for methods, but I didn't put the main method in the section for methods. There we go, cut and paste. So we hit compile, and we haven't written play yet. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out, and I'll leave a note to myself that I should probably uncomment that when I have actually implemented play. That's a good idea. So when I get around to writing the play method, I'll come back and I will uncomment that line. So I can come over here now, and instead of creating a new domineering object, I'll just run main, and there we are. All it does is say welcome to domineering. But I want to revisit something that is given a bit of stress in the text in this chapter, that arrays have three components. They have a declaration, and 
Uh oh. An allocation and an initialization. So we declare it, we then allocate it, which is the step highlighted there, and then we initialize the values of the allocated array. Those three steps are critical whenever we're working with arrays, so please keep that in mind.